Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have sumac. This comes to us from our friend Dan in Las Vegas. I'm really anxious to see what's inside of this. The piece is uh, about nine by nine, depending on where you measure it, by about four and a half inches. Has that really cool inside there. And I'm hoping we're going to run into that somewhere along the line. I'm sure we will. It has this really odd torn branch here. And I thought I would put that on the bottom. Uh, because I was afraid that if it was on the top I'd end up turning it away. I'm still, I'm still kind of working it out. But I, I would love to incorporate that into the, the piece when it's finished. It's just, it's just interesting is all. I wouldn't say it's pretty, but it's interesting. So if I can save that somehow, I just have to figure out which way to turn it. Well, it took a little doing, but I've got it mounted up on a woodworm screw. I think this part that I want to keep, I won't be able to keep all of it. Some of it's just going to go away, but I think it's kind of in a protected area here that I won't cut it away, I hope. I really hope. I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. We're going to be turning at 540 RPM. Mask and face shield on. And glove. Well, this is turning out pretty cool so far. Well, it's all round, so let's flatten off the bottom gonna be a little bit noisy for a minute while I get rid of this if I can I'm just seeing if I have enough room here for a tenon I do everywhere except right here If I can get three quarters of a tenon, I'll be happy. We'll see if I guessed right on the tenon size. Yeah, I did. Yep, that'll work just fine. I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. That looks good. Well, I only have, I don't have any base over here. I only have here and here. So I need to go up a little higher to catch this. Shouldn't be... Yeah, we're just about there. Now the base is not going to be that wide. I just wanted to catch right here. And I've done that, so back to this corner. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to try and clean up my cuts. It's really hard because it just bounces so much, but see what I can do here. Maybe I'll just use my scraper, negative rake scraper. Well, this is going to be a cool looking bowl. Very cool. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sando Flex. This is 180 grit. I'm going to sand all of the bark and this area and this huge hole that we now have that we didn't have before. Whatever was in there is gone. I don't know if it was dirt or I don't know what it was, but it's not there. And that's going to affect the inside. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a hole in the side of our bowl. Or in the bottom of our bowl. Anyway, so Sando Flex with 180 grit. And then I'll switch to an 80 grit 2 inch disc. And sand all of the turned parts. And I'll do that up through 400 grit. And I'll show you how that looks as soon as I get my mask on. And that's going to do a real nice job cleaning it up, making it feel nice. And then with the lathe spinning at about 340 in reverse. And that looks like that'll be pretty easy. I'll bring you back here in a little bit when it's time to put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. I usually apply the sanding sealer with a rag but and then a brush where needed but this is going to be more brush than rag so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to brush the whole thing and then I will come behind it with a rag with fresh sanding sealer on it to wipe up any runs or spills or whatever I might have on the turned parts. I just love this part right here. This is so cool. I am disappointed about that hole. But I can see why. It was probably all bark in there. Because there's still all bark in there. And it was probably just loose and it just fell out. That's all. But we'll see. We'll do the best we can. See what happens. So this is what I'll be doing for a while. I'll put on, it looks like, two coats of uh, sanding sealer followed by two coats of shellac applied exactly the same way so I won't show the shellac application looks just like this and I'll bring you back when it's time to start working on the inside so I'll see you in a bit I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck this is going to be a pretty small ball because this this side right here falls off pretty quickly compared to the rest of it but I do have this huge hole peak but I'm just not going to concern myself with that we're just going to have a hole in our bucket <laughs> a hole in our bowl I'm going to be turning at 560 rpm with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on
I don't think I'm too close to the bottom, but who knows. Uh, about three quarters of an inch. That's a pretty good sized void and my chisel wants to fall into it. I can't get a fast enough speed to avoid it. I got a real rough cut here. Oh well, half an inch. I think we're going to call that good enough. I'm going to sharpen up my uh, negative rake scraper. I'll be right back. This is just really hard to get a clean cut in here when you have, you're hitting in three places and not hitting in three places it just wants to make this thing bounce around and you just can't get a clean cut but I'm gonna give it my best effort still turning at 650 <laughs> gonna take a lot of sanding I can see that I'm getting it really good in some places it's really good right here I don't know why it's not good here it's not bad over here this is awful how could it be really smooth here and really awful here I don't know Well, I feel like I'm just wasting my time. This is just smooth as can be over here. That's awful. I'm just gonna have to sand it. I'm just, I'm just wasting my time. It'll take a little extra effort. I'll show you how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I would sand these, these grooves. Can you see those grooves in there? Yeah, you can see them. Nasty looking. See these grooves in here? And then there's another nasty one down here, right there. I think what's happening, I, I, I probably didn't mention that this piece is wet. I didn't even test it. I don't know how wet, but wet. And I think it's shrinking as I turn it and it's drying as I turn it. And I think maybe this piece is, this piece is pulling inward and that piece is staying out or vice versa. And so when they come around, they're hitting the chisel at different points and that's causing these grooves in there and I can't make them go away uh, with normal turning. So typically what I would do, I have to get my mask on to show you this, but I, I'll do that. I'll just sand it while it's not spinning. I'll just sand it in one spot here. I'll get my mask on and show you. But but that will that'll get rid of those and then spin it and sand it so that you get all one nice smooth sanding job. What I'm also going to try today, and I've shown these before. There's there's a set of two sanders that you can buy. Well, it's not a set, and I don't get anything for this. I want you to know that I'm not sponsored. Nobody's given me anything except that they did. Okay, they did. They gave me these two sanders. A long time ago, a couple years ago, Tuffy and I, Tuffy Marginas and I, 
had a discussion about a sander that I thought would be useful. And Tuffy's a machinist, and son of a gun, he came up with it and sent it to me, and I tried it out, and it worked great. And Well, uh, Tuffy doesn't want to make these for sale, but he knows of a machine shop that does want to make them for sale, and now they are for sale. Two different sanders. This one will get the sides. This one will get the bottom and partially up the side. So I'm going to try this one today. I don't think I'm going to try this one. It's a little bit big for this piece. It'd probably work, but it's it's just a little big, and I don't I don't want to go over the edge and ruin the edge. So I'm going to go with a smaller one. I'm going to try that, but first I'm going to try this. I'll show you this one. This is an 80 grit disc, two inch disc, and this right here is happens to be 150 grit. That's what came loaded in here is 150. And I don't want to take time right now to change it to something else. But I'll try the 80. I'll try this 150. And we'll see how we do. And if you like those sanders, you can buy them. They're available. You go to TuffyMarginez.com. All one word, Tuffy Marginez, T-U-F-F-Y-M-A-R-G-I-N-E-Z.com. If you spell it wrong, if you spell it Tuffy Martinez, that's wrong, you'll still get there. Either, either one will get you to the right spot, but the correct spelling is Tuffy Marginez, like margarine. Kind of weird. I don't know how he came up with that name. He said he named it after a dog, but I don't know how he came up with the dog's name. Marginez. Anyway, so I'm going to show you these as soon as I get my mask on. We'll see how they work. I think this way you can see the grooves better, but I can't see it to sand it. So I got, I'm going to put it down here. Maybe you can still see them. I'm not sure. Well, actually, I'm going to put it over there. Yeah, they're, they're just about gone, but I left, where'd that other one go, in the bottom, right here. I left this untouched, so we'll see how this one does. Now with this one, I'm going to spin the piece. Lay this spinning at about 400 RPM. Now that's only 150 grit. Let's see how it did. There's that groove. It's just about gone as well. If that's appealing to you, those two sanders, they're for sale. TuffyMarginez.com. There's a video on, on there as well on how to load the sandpaper. And when you buy the refills, they come all pre-folded, ready to go. And they've even developed a tool to help change this sandpaper. So it's just something for you to be aware of. I get nothing for it. I'm not sponsored. But they did send me these for free to try out. So that's what I'm doing. Trying them out. Okay, so now you see what I'm going to be doing. After I get those grooves out of there, then I'm going to spin the piece normally. And that, that will smooth it all out. But that's not enough to get those deep grooves out at this point. I got to get them out of there first and then I'll sand it normally. Up through 400 grit like I normally do. And then I'll bring you back here in a little bit when it's time to put some sanding sealer on. See you in a bit. Well, I don't think we're going to find any ripples, any tool marks, any, any problems in this piece. It did take quite a little bit of sanding. I'll tell you what, this sander came in real handy. That did a nice job for me. But it took a lot of hand sanding inside here. All these little sharp edges and whatnot. Now I gotta get back to the inside of this bowl here real quick before all that sets up. I gotta get over it with a, a rag with some fresh sanding sealer on it. 
because if you don't do this, what will happen is you'll get brush marks or runs or something in there. So you need to put some fresh sanding sealer on the rag to melt whatever has gone before it. Yeah, I don't see any, I don't see any tool marks. Okay, so that's the first of two coats of shellac, or she's uh, first of two coats of sanding sealer. And then I'll put on two coats of shellac as I did on the outside, and I'll bring you back when it's time to take that tenon off. See you in a bit. You probably hear a hum, that's my heater going because it's freezing out here. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. It has a non-slip surface on it. I'm gonna place the bowl over that and bring up the tailstock. I still have my center hole there for reference. I'm gonna apply a little pressure, bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true. Uh, it's hard to tell because we're missing a missing a little piece here, but I think so. I think it's pretty true. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. I'm checking for clearance and we're good. Now I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer and just keep working it away. And I'm going to turn the speed down to about 300 RPM. Now I'm going to turn the speed down to 200 RPM and I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, pressure towards the headstock. And when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Like that. Or it falls apart. Which sometimes happens. Now I'll just take this over to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share this video, that would be just terrific. That would really help out quite a bit. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Well, here it is. One sumac live edge bowl in the books. I look at this here now as the biggest feature of this piece. This is, it's, uh, it makes it special, I think. It really just about doesn't even affect the bowl part as far as being a hole. The, the bowl is still quite usable. I just love that. Oh, I love that. What that is is a branch. It's just a branch. It goes from here all the way around up here. And it's just a branch that just broke all to pieces. And it's cool looking. And there's the bottom all finished up. You see anything from that view? Yeah, you do. You see his two eyes. He's an evil man. Or maybe he's a maybe he's an extraterrestrial. Here's his chin, two eyes, nose. Ooh, got big eyes. And this way, look what you see here. <laughs> you see, you got two eyes and a nose and uh, either his hair up here or a beret, I'm not sure which. And then he's got his tongue hanging out of his mouth. Or maybe that's a cigar, a stogie. It's just just a really nice piece of wood. Thank you to Dan for sending this along from Las Vegas for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. 
If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there at the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.